I allude you. Do swear that. Do swear that. I'll speak the truth. I'll speak the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Mr. Jang. Welcome to the TRRC. Good morning, sir. Um, we have met before. Uh, I just want to receive some confirmations from you. Yes, sir. Uh, prior to your appearance before the Commission today, you have been given certain warnings, correct? Yes, sir. And uh, you have been warned that it is an offense to lie before the commission, yes. correct? Correct. You have been informed also that it is an offense to refuse to answer questions before the commission, correct? Correct. You have, in fact, uh, signed a document indicating that you have been given those warnings I just mentioned, correct? Correct. Uh, you are alleged to have been involved in the unlawful killing of Daud Anyasi, unlawful killing of Deida Haidara, unlawful killing of Ndongombu, unlawful killing of Haro Najame, the unlawful killing of Daba Marena and five others, including Aliusise, Ibulo, Manlafikor, Alfaba, a lady called Julia and Masire Jame. You are also alleged to have been involved in the execution of over 40 West African migrants. You are also alleged to have been involved in the torture of General Savage and others at NIA premises. You are also alleged to have been involved in the arrest and torture of Lieutenant Faring Sanyang and others at the NIA premises. Do you recall having been informed about these allegations? I recall. And you, in fact, signed a document indicating that you have been informed of these allegations? I have been informed. Um, thank you very much. Kindly tell us your full names, please. My name is Aliu Jeng. What is your date of birth? My date of birth is 2nd of July, 1979. Where were you born? I was born in Banjo. Where in Banjo? I was born um, at RTH. Or by that time, my parents were residing at John Street, number three. Okay. Um, thank you. Where did you go to school? I go to school at St. Mary's Primary School. Which year? That was 1987 or 1993. And what did you do after that? After that, I proceeded to St. Augustine Junior Secondary School. Is that school known by any other name? It's known as Pajuf. And did you complete St. Augustine's Secondary School? Yes, I completed, sir. When did you complete? I completed 1996. Okay, and what did you do after that? After that, I proceeded to National Youth Service Scheme, known as NYSS. And what did you do at the NYSS? At the NYSS, I was doing a reconstruction and carpentry and joinery as my trade. Did you complete? Yes, I completed. And what did you do after completion? After completion, I ventured into our machinery and construction. But later, things were not going well with me due to certain reasons. So then, uh, then I decided to join the army. Which year did you join the army? That was 4th of February. 2001. <coughs> Where did you do your military training? At the Gambia Armed Forces Training School at Fajara Barracks. 
And when did you complete your training? I completed my training around August 2001. And what did you do upon completion? After I completed, I was deployed at Fajara Barracks. For how long were you at Fajara Barracks? I was in Fajara Barracks for almost 10 to 11 months. And then? And then from there, I was selected to go for a course. Which course was that? That was a commando course. Uh -huh. Who organized that commando course? That commando course was organized by the state guard. And different personnel from different battalions were invited to join. Okay. And where was the course held? The course was held at the uh, police training school in Yundu. In Yundu? Yeah. Uh, do you recall with whom you participated in that course? Okay, I can't re re recall all of them, but there were m many. Some come from different battalions, like oh. Farafenye, Yundum. Some personnel come from the Navy, and some from one like me. I come from um, Biden GNG, Gambia National Guard. Oh, can you remind, can you tell us uh, the names of the personnel who participated in that training, at least those that you can remember? I cannot recall all of them as of now, but I believe I will try to recall some of them that are still in my mind. Go ahead. Abdullah Balde. Adam Balde. Um, okay. Sololo. I think something like Lamin Sane, but we call him Sololo. Resoto mm. Kungbari. Yeah. Go ahead. Yes, Stokongbari and one like you use for Sane. Go ahead. Mm. This man, how to call it? Aliu, Aliu. Aliu Jame. Go ahead. Murlamin Baji. Go ahead. May I be of help? How about Fansu Nyabali? Yeah, Fansu Nyabali was part of it. Okay. How about uh, Alaji Chor? No, Alaji Chor was part of the first batch. Uh, how many people participated in the training in which you I attended? Think, if I don't forget, I believe it's almost 40 people. Almost 40 people. Or more. Okay, let me, let me ask you. Uh, who conducted the training? A training, according to what I have found out from the people I was sharing the course with, this course started in Libya. Some personnel, some Gambia Armed Forces are personnel, we are taken to Libya for training. Then the first batch go, they came, then the second batch of them also went to Libya for the training. Then later, they decided to take the same team that trained those people to bring them in the Gambia to train badges in the Gambia also. So, what is the nationality or the nationalities 
of those who conducted the training? Those are Libyans. Good. And uh, I would run other names by you and see what you say, whether they trained with you, before you, or after you. Uh, Lieutenant Samba Balde. Samba Balde. No, Lieutenant Samba Balde, no. I don't know who's Lieutenant Samba Balde. So, General Sol Baji? No, General Sol Baji was not part of that. Captain Mustafa Fall? Captain Mustafa Fall, according to my understanding, he was an instructor because he, went to, he did the course in Libya. So, he was an instructor during your own training? Yeah, during our own training. How about Bailo? Bailo was part of the first bike. How about Malik Jata? Mali Jata was an instructor. During your training? Yeah. Uh, how about Sanamanjan? Sanamanjan also was an instructor. How about Michael Correa? No, Michael Correa was not part of that. Momodu Sane? Momodu Sane? No, Momodu Sane was... The, the Momodu Sane, I know he came from Navy. He was from Navy. Mm -hmm. That Momodu Sane, he was part of the first bike. Uh, Captain Sehujalo? No, Captain Sehujalo was part of the first bike. How about Jola Moro? Jola Moro was part of the first bike. Ibrahim Ajalo? Ibrahim Ajalo? No, I don't know of Ibrahim Ajalo. Faring Sanyang? Faring Sanyang? Okay, I don't know exactly. But Faring also was part of the instructors. I don't know, I, I'm not sure whether he was, he went to Libya or not. Captain Sanjali Sala. Sanjali Sala was part of the first batch. Maulud Koli. Maulud also was part of the first batch. Sirif Gise. Sirif Gise was part of the first batch that trained in the Gambia. Emel Koli. Emel Koli. No, I don't know which Emel Koli are you referring to. Sheikh Omar Juf. So, Sheikh Omar Juf was part of the first batch. Biram Get. Berenguet also was part of the first bike. Emel Mendy? Emel Mendy. No, I don't know of Emel Mendy. Jeresi Sao? Jeresi Sao was part of the first bike. Alaji Chor? If I don't make a mistake. Alaji Chor also was part of the first bike. And Aliu Sise? Aliu Sise was part of the first bike. Okay, let me... Yes, these are the names I have. Uh, your group, the only names I have are Abdullah Balde, Adama Balde, Sololo, Sintukumbari, and Yusuf Asani, and yourself. Mm. Those are the only names I have. Uh, um, Alu. Yes, uh, you also mentioned Ali Jame, Modula Minbagi, and Fansu Nyabali. Yeah. These are the people you can remember from your team. And there's a man, I don't know, somebody who's called Silla. He was a signaler, but now he left the army. Silla. Silla, I forget the name. From Signals, huh? Signals yeah. Unit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, who else? Mm. It's all right. If you, these are the people you can remember I so far. I can remember as a number. That's right. So, how long did this training last? This training lasts for almost five months. And uh, what happened after the training? After the training, I was expecting to go back to my unit. That is GNG, Fajara Barracks, where I was deployed to come to uh, for the course. I was expecting to go back, but later we were asked to stay at the state house. The whole uh, team that trained together. Under whose command? Okay, I cannot re recall my mind exactly because by that time I was not used to the people of the state house. 
But if I don't make a mistake, I believe Biden, um, how do you call it, Lantombong Tamba was the commander. But where that information come from? I only read it on the notice board that we are now part of the state guard when I was expecting to go back to my unit. And can you tell us which year you did this training? This training, this is um, 2002. 2002. Yeah. And what happened afterwards? You are now deployed to State House yeah. as a State Guard under the command of Langtombong Tamba. Mm -hmm. Tell us what happened after that. After? We were part of the Delta Company. Because in the State House, we have different companies. We have the Alpha, the Bravo, the Chelly, and the Delta Company. And who was your platoon commander in the Delta Company? No, Delta Commander, the platoon commander was Aliusise. And who was his immediate superior? No, I don't know who was his immediate superior. Because my, me, by that time, I don't work with this uh, senior men directly. The most people I work with is the lance couple and the couple. The highest rank I can recall was the sergeant. Sometimes maybe the battalion CSM. What is CSM? Company Sergeant Major. Who was he at the time? He was this man, I call it. Known as Jagaid, something Koli. But but we know him as Jagaid. And because of his nickname, I don't Jagai or Jagaid? Jagaid. Like, like when you say Jagaid you. Yes. Jagaid, yes. Proceed, please. Um and uh, did you remain in Delta Company for long? Yes, I spent a little time with the Delta Company. And then did you happen to join any group in 2003? Okay, before I come to that, I would like to explain this part. When I was at the um, Delta Company, we were responsible of the uh, internal guard of the state guard. And the, of the state guard or of the state house? State guard battalion. The state house is there, but the soldiers are set up. It's called the state guard or battalion. Uh, what were your responsibilities? My responsibility at time was sometimes we perform duties at Denton Bridge, the airport, and and the state house. Yeah, they, yeah, these are the responsibilities. And sometimes we man the quarry of the state guard. You man the quarry? We man the QRF. Okay. All right. Of the state. Of the state house. Of the state house. Okay. And uh, for how long did you remain in the Delta Company? Delta Company, I was there up to 2003. And then what happened? I believe in 2003, later we get the information that all of the company's members of Delta now are, are going to be deployed to our Kanilai permanent for a while till further notice. Uh -huh. Proceed, please. And we, when we were at Kanilai, we performed duties. That was the time the Kalaji guard post at, at the bridge was open. Iman Kamfenda checkpoint and the president's and the ex-president's resident in Kanilai. Proceed, please. Uh, those were my responsibilities down there at Kanilai. Yeah. Did your responsibilities change at all while you were there? Yeah, it changed. Kindly tell us, please. Okay. 
Because when I was in Kanilai, I was performing my duties. One day, because according to how it went, it was that before I left from my sentry post, somebody was needed at the bed gate. The reason I don't know, but the guard commander decided to, because by that time, uh, uh, it was time for the guard changes uh, to be done. So he decided to wait until I come, then when I am changed, because if he should take the person who should change me, then I'm going to spend more time uh, at my guard post. So the guard commander decided to wait until I close. So when I close, he give me an information that Tumbul Tamba needed someone to go to him. Proceed, please. Okay. When Tumul Tamba asked for someone from the main gate, and I was called to went there. So when I did my things, I placed my my chest weapon and other things that I was having. Then I moved towards his house. So when I when, when I reached there, I asked his orderly. He tell me that he's upstairs. Then I tell him that I am around. Then I heard that he was asking for someone from the main gate. Then that's the time. Uh, the orderly went up, informed him. Then he came back to me and tell me that, yes, he said that you can go and answer to him. So when I went there, there is where I meet that was in the evening. That was in the evening. So when I went there, I met Manjang was sitting with Malik Jata. So when I met him sitting Manjang and Malik Jata, so I come, he tell me sit, then I seated. He tell me, then he stopped his conversation and tell me, okay, now we are going for mission. But you, all I want you to do is that anywhere we go, our vehicle where it parked, be there and check our vehicle. Okay, um, let's take it a few steps backwards. How were you deployed to Kanilai? It was the whole company that we had deployed. It was an order from the command that everybody from Delta Company I'm moving to Kanilai. When you moved to Kanilai, yeah. were you assigned to work with a particular group? No, by then there was no particular group. Do you know the patrol team? Yes, I know the patrol team. How did, were you a member of the patrol team? It was later that this team come to form. Uh, uh, uh answer the question. Were you a member of the patrol team? Yes, I was. Can you tell us how you became a member of the patrol team? Yes, this is what I'm explaining. This, here is where it started. By that time, it was not a team. What do you mean by that? It was not a team. Okay. What I mean is that during this time, I was on the ground. Nobody warned me of being part of any team. Mm -hmm. Because I believe if there is a team that I should be, I have to be warned that now you are part of this team. And the team have to be mentioned to me. But nobody mentioned a team to me, that you are part of a team. Were you at any point in time taken to Sanamanjang and informed that from now on you would be working with Sanamanjang, Malik Jata and Co. No, that have never happened. Nobody have ever taken me to Sanamanjang. 
It was the team was formed, I believe, later part when some soldiers were brought in. That was the only time I can remember. They bring those people and say that now these people are going to be here with you people. You are going to form a patrol team. Was this after your first mission or before your first mission? After my first and second mission. Uh, this is what Malik Jata had to say. He testified before this commission. He said one day you, Aliu Jeng, and him were warned by Major Bajinka that you should report to Tumbultamba in Kanilai to join the patrol team. And at that time, you guys were based in State House in Banjul. Major Bajinka instructed you, Aliu Jeng, and Malik Jata to report to Kanilai, to Tumbul Tamba, and be members of the patrol team. Do you deny that? If there is uh, anything like that, I cannot recall anything like that in my mind. But how can you forget your first day of deployment to the team with which you worked for, for years? I have never met um, how to call it, Are Bajinka in that issue, where he warned me. Wasn't, in fact, Bajinka the commander of the state guard at the time? Your immediate uh, commander? Wasn't yeah, by that time, he was the immediate commander of the state guard battalion. Yes. So would, uh, would it be wrong that Bajinka would be the person to, in fact, give you orders to transfer to Kanilai. Okay. Me, by then, I was a private soldier. And I have my limitation as a private soldier. Because I believe if that should happen, it have to follow the chain of command until it's reached to me. But if that is the statement of Malik Jata, that is him. But for me, I cannot recall such things. Are you trying to avoid accepting that even before the first mission, you were a member of the patrol team. No, I'm not trying to deny that. I'm saying what I have known. Uh, so were you, in fact, a member of the patrol team before your first mission? Before my first and second mission. No, after my first and second mission that the team was later formed. Well, your colleague said that the team was formed before the first mission. That's what he said. But for me, is what he I lying? Know, of course, he's lying. You are the one speaking the truth. Yeah, I'm the one speaking the truth. I'm saying what I have known. Okay, all right. Yeah, let's proceed. We will come back to this. Yes, sir. Okay. So you deny that the patrol team was formed before the first and second missions? The patrol team was later formed after my first and second mission. That's, you, that's your testimony? That's my testimony. Okay, proceed, please. So how did you come to become a member of the patrol team? I'll come to that later, when I reach at that point. No, just that. answer that question. How I, did you come to become a member of the, of the patrol team? How I come to become the member of the patrol team was that there was a day in Kanilai. Because after I have a problem with Tumbul, because by that time, Malik Jata, I believe he was a storeman. And this man, how to call it, Sana Manjang, also was a storeman. But for me, I was not given any responsibility like that. So, one day, we sit, I was called, at Tumbul's office, where I went, so later, some personnel of the state guards were called to come, so we have a meeting. And that meeting was, the people who attended that meeting was I myself, I was there. Malik Jada was there. Sanam Manjang was there. And 
Noa Baji was brought in, Mustafa Sane and Fansu Nyabali with um, Michael Jata. These are the people I can recall who were in that meeting. So there is where Tumbul told me that, Jeng, you know for you, you have a problem. I cannot understand you. But from now on, since you cannot be in line with us here, then know that this job, you are not the only soldier here. There are people who are ready to work for this like a, for, for the state. This is how he explained it to me. Did he say anything else? Yeah, from there he tell us that these people now, they are, they, are, they are here to be a team with you people. Then your main role is to conduct patrolling around the border. Is this the expansion of the team or is it the creation of the team? I believe it's the creation of the team. Uh, was that the first time you were working with Sana Manjang? No. Was that the first time you were working with Tumbul Tamba? No. Was that the first time you were working with Malik Jata? No. Was that the first time you were working with Fort Solo Bojang? No, I don't work with Solo Bojang then. These four people, what were you? You were into you a team? Anyway, I cannot call it a team. What would you call because it? Because from that what mission, would you call it? Well, from that mission, I go back to my normal duties. What would you call it? I don't have a name for it. But what I why I say I cannot call it a team was that after every mission, what I did was to go back to my responsibility. Isn't that normal in the army? I cannot decide that. That left to the command because I was a private soldier. Uh, so the group that was deployed for the first mission, what would you call that? I don't get a name for it. You wouldn't call it a team? It might be. And the second group, what would you call that? I can't say it. it's a team. Precisely. And yeah. you were called to the patrol team. Yes, we are called the patrol team. Later, when these people come in, that's the time it becomes like, like a patrol team. Uh, it really would not matter much mm -hmm. uh, whether you call it the patrol team later or before. The fact remains that that group I mentioned Tumul, mm. Sana Manjang, yeah. Malik Jata, yeah. and yourself participated together in missions. Yeah. True or false? True. Okay. Kindly proceed from your description of what happened for the first mission in which you participated. Okay. When I, when I read in Tumul's room, all he warned me was that Go and prepare yourself. Then later you come back. We are going for a mission. Then he give me timings. Then I went. When the time like, then I come back. So we boarded a vehicle. Okay. Just a moment. You have never worked with Tumbul before this particular occasion. No, no, no. I never, worked, never with worked with him. No, I never worked with him. Was he your immediate commander? Tumbul? Tumbul, no. Tumbul was not my immediate commander. But at, at, at that particular time, in Kanilai, he was part of the he was part of the command. Would Tumbul be the person to give you your orders? Tumbul, yeah, I I can say yes because he's part of the command. Listen to the question. At the time, mm. you were not working with Tumbul. You were not in his team, correct? Mm, yeah. Did you have anything to do with him at that time? I didn't been. Did you have anything to do with him at the time? At that time.
Yeah, this is what I'm trying to explain here. Go ahead. Hadn't been my God commander. Don't give me that go ahead. I will not go to him. So you're telling us that you are just picked at random. Yes. That's your testimony. You were picked at random. It was just by chance. I cannot decide whether it's by chance because it left to the command. Because as a private soldier, you cannot decide for yourself. Do you your decision of the job is on the hands of the, of the command. All members of the patrol team trained as commandos, correct? Correct. And it is the members of the patrol team who are called junglers, correct? Some people call them junglers. And you don't call them junglers? Because I don't train as a jungler. But the patrol team you know was also synonymous to junglers. After when the team was when the team was formed, there were members of the team who participated in this jungler course, and many people before before this team, there were teams that were operating in the state house. And when I was in Fajara Barracks, when we would go for patrolling from the QRF, because that was a daily routine at night at Fajara QRF, we they do do a deployment for for the, for this team patrolling. There was there was a time. I meet with a team around uh, the Bijolo, where they used to mine the sand. Because by that time, Fajara Barracks were very particular uh, about that area. Uh, because the mining there was illegal. Some of these trucks, they do sneak at night and go inside that place, fetch sand and go and sell it. So whenever we go out for patrolling, we do pass by there. There was a day we meet with a pickup of soldiers. So when I ask about them, they tell me that these people are from the state house, they are patrol. So after that, when I come to the state house also, I was hearing these junglers. I was hearing about them. I heard that they do perform patrolling and other stuff. And the group you joined? The group I joined. Some people believe that it's the same junglers that is going to, this is why still now the same team is called the junglers. So do you accept therefore that the team you joined is, a, is the team that was called the junglers? I cannot deny that. Good, good. So, so let's proceed. Uh, what, what, at what stage were you informed about the job of the junglers or what their role was to be? Anyway, the day I met Tumbul in his house, he never informed me of anything. Because I met him, he was talking with Manyang. When I come, they keep quiet. So later he tell them, no, give me a chance. Let me talk to this man. Then when he talked to me, when he finished, then he tell me, go and prepare and come. But that's how I went and leave them and, there. And what did he tell you? He tell me that we are going for a mission. Anyway, we pack what up. mission? Huh? No. What, what he, was the mission? He don't come into details. Did because you ask him what mission? No, I don't ask him. Why? Because I feel that he's part of the command. Maybe he might tell me later. Because he was in his. He tell me, he just tell me there is a mission. Go and prepare and come. <sighs> but had it been that he had put me and explained to me exactly, this is this or that is that, then I will know exactly what will happen. Did he tell you what preparation entailed, what it meant? Sorry? Did he tell you yeah. what prepar preparation meant? Okay, the problem was that I was just from centuries. I was just from centuries. So maybe he might feel that from the sentry box, maybe the fatigue of the standing and other stuff, he might give me a time to go and prevent. This is how I see it. But maybe did you me. understand him to mean when he said go and prepare and come? That does mean that, may, okay, how can I explain is that he want me to go and sort out myself personally, then I came back. That's how and, I understand. And, and what did you do to, to sort out yourself? When I go, I take bath. I take my dinner. 
Then I come back. And how did you come back? Uh, did you carry anything? No, when I come, I don't carry anything. Did you carry a weapon? No. You went empty-handed? Yeah, I went empty-handed. Okay, proceed, please. So when I went to his house, so later, when I come, we, those, those people he was talking with, when I came back, they were not there. I think they also went. Who were they? That is Malik Jata and Sanamanjan. Proceed. So I waited for some minutes, less than five minutes. They all came. So Tumbul come down. Then we boarded the vehicle. Then we headed to the combo. And those people who came back, mm -hmm. did they carry any weapons? No. None of them carried the weapons? None of them. Okay. And proceed, please. Then from there, we boarded the vehicle. Then we headed to the Congos around Serekunda. Somewhere around, when you take it from Richardstown, going towards Serekunda. Around the garage area. He take a bend around somewhere else, somewhere like when you are going towards the uh, Serakunda primary, I believe. Proceed, please, please, proceed. Please. When, we reach, when we reach at that place, then Tumultamba was communicating on the phone. He was, yes. com he was communicating on the phone. But when he was communicating, he was speaking his native language, that is Jola. I could not hear it, what he was saying. But I know that he was communicating with someone. So later, where we parked the vehicle, I was inside the car. Later, he get down, he stand aside. Uh, on the side of the driver. Where the driver is. Uh, because he was the one driving, if I don't forget. So he stand, he was communicating. But when he communicate for some minutes, later I see him, he move forward and then go inside the darkness. So when he went in the dark, he was there, he was there for some minutes also. Then later he come out with somebody that he was coming with, the person that I never knew. I never met him. I don't recognize him. So they stand, they chat, they talk. After they talk for some times, later, he, he tumbled himself, he come and tell me, Jeng, get down from the vehicle, then, then you go behind the, uh, this thing, uh, the pickup. So that's what I did. So when I did that, so this was the time, four of them, Malik Jata, Sanamanyan, and the man, and tumbled himself be inside the cabin. Then from there, Tumbul drove towards, um, how do you call it, Puchachis town. Then headed towards the, how do you call it, towards uh, Tabokoto. Up to somewhere around Puyundum. Then he take a bend. But all I can recognize around that area, I believe is around the airport. Because well, that was night time. Maybe you cannot have a reference to recognize it, but I know that it's within the airport or the premises, or either outside the airport premises. But I'm, I was not so exactly, but I know it's within the surrounding of the airport. Would it be Buffalo to area? No, I cannot know whether it was Buffalo to or where, or somewhere else. Proceed, but, please. So the, from there, when we reach at a point, then the vehicle stop. When the vehicle stop, then they all are get down from the vehicle. After getting down from the vehicle, I was still behind the uh, behind the pickup because I don't know what was going on. So from there, they stand for some times. 
You will chat with the man, then later. What are they saying? They were speaking Jola. I could not hear what they were saying. They were speaking their native language. Proceed. So when they speak for some time, later they move. Tumbul come to me and tell me, Jen, you can stay here because the vehicle is parked. So that's how I stayed at the vehicle. This place, mm -hmm. was it in the immediate vicinity of homes or was it in a completely isolated area? I believe it's a completely isolated area because there were no buildings or any other future that you can recognize to know that this is... It was bush. It was bushy. It was also in the bush. Yeah. Were there any houses within one kilometer of where you were? No, it was night time. I couldn't see any house, to be honest. But you understand the general area and you passed through uh, some places to get to uh, where the vehicle stopped. Did you see any houses around there? No, I don't see any house. So it's a completely isolated area. It's a completely isolated area. Okay, and proceed please. What happened after that? And from there, this uh, tumble talk with the man. Later they move forward. Otherwise I was staying in the car. So there they went with the man. Later, almost nearly an hour or more, if I don't forget. So later they came back. We boarded the vehicle, then proceed to I uh, proceed to Kanilai. But when they were coming back... Hold a second. Yeah. Did you hear anything while they were gone for this one hour or two? No, I don't hear anything. As far as you're concerned, nothing happened? If there is something happened, I don't hear anything or I don't see anything because I was at the vehicle. Because in military, they don't abandon vehicles like that. You were vehicle. at the vehicle or in the vehicle? I was behind the cabin. Sorry, are uh, behind the pickup. Uh, you have to make up your mind. I was behind the pickup. Uh, you see, a minute ago, yeah, you said you were in the car when they were leaving. But prior to that, you said all of you came out and you were standing behind the pickup. They spoke and they left. Then you come back to say, well, when they were leaving, you were in the pickup. Now you're telling us again that you were out of the pickup. No, I was not in the pickup. I was out of the pickup because that started outside where they picked the man. There is where Tumul gave me the order to sit behind the pickup. We're not talking about being inside the back of the pickup. Yeah. We're talking about being in the pickup or out of the pickup, but it, I, I wouldn't bother you more with that. Yeah. All right, proceed with your story. When they were coming, what happened? Pardon? You said something happened when they were coming back. When they were coming, they didn't come with the man. Did you ask any questions? At that point of time, I don't ask. Did you hear anything about what happened? No, at that, at that particular time, I don't ask, but later, I tried to find out. And what did you find out? I tried to find out what happened to that man. And? And I, when I asked, they tell me, look, this is military. Where you are asked to stop, stop there. What you don't see, you don't see it. What you don't witness, you don't witness. You don't witness it. So don't ask too much of question. So essentially, you <laughs> don't know anything about what happened to this person? I don't know anything about what happened about him. You don't know anything. I don't know anything about what happened to about this what person. happened to him. Okay, let's take a few steps backwards and then we would try to deal with this issue. Yes, sir. In fact, your deployment to Kanilai was purposely mm -hmm. to be a member of the patrol team. No, I don't agree to that because we were deployed there as a platoon. 
In fact, if you uh, let me read out as what, a company uh, what Malik had to say. He says, Ali Ujeng and I were warned. He did not say the plot the whole Delta company. He said, Ali Ujeng and I were warned by Bajinka that we should report to Tumbul Tamba in Kanilai to join the patrol team, which is a subunit of the battalion. I found it published that we were part of the patrol team and a vehicle arrived to take us to Kanilai. You deny that? No, I don't go with Malik Jata to Kanilai. Does Malik Jata know you? Malik Jata, he knows me. And how many people did he work with during that time? Many. I can say the whole state guard. And he chose to mention nobody else but you. Why do you think he would do that? The, the reason why best known to him. But for me... Well, he said that that is the truth. The what, two of you were deployed to the patrol team. That's what he said. Prior to your force operation, were you informed about the work of the patrol team and what you are expected to be doing in Kanila? No. Uh, were you given a tour of Kanila so that you would know the roads, the routes in and out of Kanila? No. Were you taken to the border with Kazamas and asked and informed as to how to patrol that particular area? No, 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 that, that have never happened. Malik Jata is lying. Malik Jata is lying. If he say that, he's lying. Why would he lie about that? I don't know. The reason best known to him. But have you ever been given such a course, such an orientation about Kanilai? Okay, how I start to know the surrounding... Answer the question. Have you been given, given such an orientation? Orientation, no. So you've never been taken in and out of Kanila? You've no. never been sold the routes? No, no, no. That have never happened. Uh, have you been told that Tumbul Tamba and Sanamajang would be your commander? No. Have you, in fact, been told that you were going to be a member of a killer squad? No. But you see, this is the problem. You don't want to be part of that killer squad. So you want to try to extricate yourself from all the activities which made you know that you are going to be part of a killer squad. No, I'm not trying to extricate myself in this matter. Malik Jara, he said what he knows. That's what he said. And you saying what you know. And me, I say what I am now. Malik Jara cannot speak on my behalf. Okay, yes, Malik cannot speak on your behalf. But some people died, and you were there, and you participated in it, only that you wouldn't have the courage to say that you were there and participated in it. Which people? Pardon? But we will come I to that. I don't understand. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now let's move to the Nyasi thing. <laughs> Do you know a person called Dauda Nyasi? No, I don't know the person called Dauda Nyasi. But during this investigation, I heard that the person who was picked at that uh, Pristarakunda, uh, around Pristarakunda cinema, that is the person who was Dauda Nyasi. And what happened to him? He was the one, Tumbul was communicating. He asked him to get inside the vehicle and he drove whilst I was behind the pickup up to behind the airport. And what happened to him? I don't know what happened to him. They went with him. You killed him? I don't kill him. Uh, let's, I will ask the OV man to play the clip we have of uh, the statement of Malik Jata on Dauda Nyasi. When we came down, he grabbed this gentleman by the collar of his shirt pulled him out, and then as he was pushing him, we were standing behind the vehicle, all three of us. Name names. Who was that? That was myself, Sanamanjang, and Ali Ujeng. Good. And then what happened? So he pushed this man past us, and he pushed him forward, pulling out a pistol. Before he shot, before he shot in fact, when he pulled this man, he said, gentlemen, this is one of the idiots. What did you understand him to mean by that? 
Uh, that means one of the rebels. <laughs> but he will he will define them. He will describe them as the idiots. And then what did he do? Then he posted him and released a sword. At who? At the man that he posted. And then what happened after that? He looked back and saw us. We were we were not there to shoot, but he had mentioned before this that you know do as I do. So when he looked back, there was no response. He shouted, "What are you people waiting for?" At this point, all the three of us, as I have mentioned, Manja and myself and Jane, pulled out our pistols. So I pulled out my pistol before I shot. We were all reluctant anyway. And you will feel. I pulled the pistol and uh, there was something I said that in the interest of my country, we are ordered to go you down. So while I was saying that, these two people have already shot. That's why I believe my shot was the last. I didn't even pick up on him. I just pulled out the pistol and said, in the interest of my country, we are ordered to go you down. So and I you pointed the down. weapon to the direction of the target and they squeezed the trigger. It fired. All four of you. All fired at the victim. He fired the victim and the victim fell down. Then the three of us, when he shouted on us, that what do we wait for? What did we use to wait? What we were what were we waiting for? We all squeezed shots in the direction of this. Yeah, I heard it. Uh, is does Malik you think Malik Jata did not know how this victim died? Malik Jata? He might know something about how that man died. Uh, uh, do you think mm. Malik Jata knows how the victim died? No, I don't think. Why? Because I don't see where that man was shot. The question is, mm. do you think that Malik Jata mm. knows how the victim died? Did I think Malik Jata knows? Ah, anyway, because before you think of something and believing in that thing, is something that you have seen. Do, do, do you think Malik Jata would have a reason to lie about how the victim died? Yeah, Malik Jata is lying. Uh, you think Malik Jata would lie about how the victim died just to implicate himself in the killing of that victim? Malik Jata is lying, sir. Uh, you, all you're doing is hiding behind Lamin Malik Jata is lying. But you're not answering the question. Uh, I will repeat the question. Let me hear. Do you think Malik Jata would lie about how the victim died just so that he can implicate himself in the killing of the victim? That is up to him. It's him. Uh, no, no. The, I am now asking you, not him. Mm. He's been asked. He answered. I'm now asking you, do you think he would do that? I cannot read what is in his mind to know whether he's thinking like that. And do you think mm. Malik Jata would come to say that the victim died out of gun, by gunshots when there were no guns available? If he received any gun, then he knows where he get it. You said they, none of them had a gun. But they were inside the cabin. You said none of them had a gun. Because I don't see it with them. You see, you come to lie about not having a weapon yourself simply because you want to concoct this fanciful story that there was no killing. I don't see any killing. You did not even hear a gunshot? I don't hear a gunshot. So the victim just suddenly evaporated from and just disappeared like that? I don't know how he disappeared. The truth is you, Malik Jata, Sana Manjang, and Tumbul Tamba executed Dauda Nyasi in cold blood in this isolated area and you left him there. You are denying your responsibility. You're trying to shield yourself from responsibility. I'm not trying to deny myself from this responsibility. As a junior man, in military, orders are given. You walk according to orders. The order yes, I and you were ordered to shoot, and you shot. I don't order to shoot. All I was ordered was to stay in the vehicle, sir. And what? And what? And do what? But what the vehicle where it is. 
to watch it from what? This is military. Vehicles are not isolated just like that. But the guy was killed there and then. They did not have to go one hour inside to kill the person. The commander gave the order that suits him. The vehicle, they did not go away from the vehicle. They shot him there and then in your presence and you participated. No, they went with the man. Why? I Why? don't know. This, they, they are in no man's land. In the bush. Why would they go into the bush to hide the car and go into the bush to do the killing? So that car, had, maybe, according to me, my own understanding as a soldier, what I believe, maybe, Tumul might think that if he leave that vehicle there at night, somebody might come and be difficult there and ask and cause an alert. That's why they did not even have to leave the car. They shot him there and then. No, they leave the car there. The car was isolated. Sir. And one hour? They had to go away for one hour? Yeah. Or maybe more than that. Or oh, even more than that? Because I don't check the time at the time. But this, this is my own but, but the, estimation. The thing is, you cannot explain why. These people have already gone into the bush. Completely isolated area. There is no house within one kilometer of that area. They were already isolated. Of course, they were isolated. Why would they have to now leave the car to go somewhere else to kill the victim? That is chosen by Tumul. He's the commander. No, no you, have, you have chosen that story because you want to extricate yourself from the I'm killing. I'm not trying to extricate myself from this killing, sir. Your story does not add up. It does not. As far as my I know, I walk according to the orders that that Tumbul give. And your orders were cannot, to kill the person. I cannot go beyond that. The order he gave me is to watch the vehicle and there is where I stop. I watch the vehicle, sir. Yes, you have refused to accept. I don't refuse to accept. I'm telling you what I have known. You are telling us your concocted story. I'll move on to the next topic. I. I'll move on to the next topic. Yes, sir. Which other operation did you participate in? This was another day. On this day, I was at um, that place, Sanyangkunda Sangha. You were where? Sanyangkunda Sangha. There is a Sangha, like a guard post. There is a defensive that we call Sangha in the army. Proceed, please. So when I was at Sangha, Tumbul also called me. He sent for me. He sent his orderly to come and call me. So I went. When I went to his house, there is where he asked me that they are going for a mission. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, also he asked me that they are going for a mission. But before that, yes, go ahead. Before that, there was these other soldiers. Sometimes we do see soldiers going out. When we ask where they are going for, they say that they are going for patrolling around the, uh, the Greater Banjul area. Because the reason was that there were these uh, people who used to pick pocket around the uh, the Banjul garage in Serakunda, like the road called 
I don't know, Colomba Road, something like that. This was the information we do pick at the state house. Sometimes when you are at the main gate, when these vehicles are going out, we do hear from them. Then we ask, they say that, you know, this is that, this is, uh, these people are going to, to court, these people who used to pick pocket. I'm, I'm Robin. Uh, because those kind of things, we are too much uh, around that area. So, on that day, when Tubul called me, he don't brief me exactly what is going to happen. The reason why, I don't know why he don't brief me. So, he tell you that we are At going this to... stage, was it normal that he would brief you? Yes, it's very important for him to brief me. Uh, the question is, was it normal that he would brief you? Yes, it's normal. And uh, pre prior to that occasion, he would brief you about missions? Sorry, I could not understand your... Prior to this particular occasion, he would normally brief you about missions you were going to go for? No. Because that was my second mission. He never briefed me of anything. So why were you expecting a briefing on this occasion? No, because I feel if you should call me, you should have tell me something. Be because, I do not... Listen, sorry. Because since the first operation, I wanted to ask, I was stopped for not asking questions. This is why... Could you say that again? Since the first mission... I wanted to ask about what happened. So when I wanted to ask, they tell me that I should not ask questions because me, I ask too much of questions. Uh, Mr. Witness. Yep. When you were told to prepare and go for mission, yeah. I asked you the question. Yeah. Did you ask questions? And you said you should not ask questions. This is the army. This is what happens. They tell you, prepare you and go, you prepare and go. You don't ask questions. Now, now, you, you, now you want to change. You want to t make us believe that you ask too many questions. Don't and because you ask too many questions, they stop you from asking questions. This, because I don't know what was going on. I wanted to know. This is why I asked. So when I, when I started asking, asking questions, I was stopped. What we don't understand. Uh, you told us. You did not ask any questions because you should not be asking questions. I didn't you say that earlier? No, I cannot recall saying that. Well, maybe, we recall. Maybe my mind might. We recall you said it. No, I don't I say that. I asked you the question specifically. I cannot recall saying that. You cannot recall saying that. Yeah. Well, the commissioners would uh, make up their minds on, on, they would assess the evidence and make up their minds on that. Yeah. But I can assure you yeah. that you said quite clearly that you shouldn't ask questions because this is the army. I cannot recall saying that. You cannot recall saying that. Yeah. Okay, proceed. Maybe, maybe now you tell us right. that you do ask questions. <laughs> this is after, when I start, when I was stopped, I start asking questions after my first mission, I wanted to know what happened. So when I wanted when I wanted to know, I asked question and okay. I was stopped. On that particular issue, yeah. Did you have any discussions on the way about idiots who had to be killed? No, I never heard of anything like that. Where did you sit in the vehicle on your return? On our return. On our return, I was inside the cabin. So you would not have missed the discussions that were taking place? No, I don't, I cannot recall any discussion taking place inside that cabin. So there was silence from the, that part of the airport where you are until you arrive at Kanilai? There was no silence. What were they talking about? I cannot remember exactly what they were talking about, but I know they were, they were not talking anything like what happened inside the cabin. They were discussing our different topics. What topics? I don't, I cannot recall my mind because this thing a long time. This is what Malik Jata had to say.
I read out from his statement. He said, on our return journey back to Kanilai, I asked who the man was, and Tumbul said that he was Dauda Nyasi, a member of the rebels from Liberia. I never received such information. Do you think Malik would also fabricate this? Yes, Malik, my, he might fabricate, but I don't know where he get that information. Uh, Malik, said, Malik said he got that information whilst you guys were driving back. He asked Tumbul, and Tumbul answered that this person was Dauda Nyasi, one of the rebels from Liberia. Maybe, may, maybe he might have such conversation with Tumbul, but for me, I don't hear such conversation. You don't want to hear anything it's not that I about want to hear. the killing of this person. No, it's not that I don't want to hear anything, but I don't hear anything. You wouldn't hear anything, you wouldn't see anything, you wouldn't do anything. It's not that I wouldn't, I don't hear anything. So, can you explain why would Malik Jata now want to lie about the conversations? lie about your act and lie about your presence and lie about his own acts and the acts of other people why would he fabricate this story yes malik jata might fabricate those stories to cover himself to, to cover himself from what i don't know because he knows where he get that stories from but if, if, in if, fact, if, he implicated himself. Would he lie to implicate himself? I don't know. Because I cannot read. Would you words. lie to implicate yourself? I will never lie to implicate myself. Why do you think somebody else would? I can only talk of myself. The question is I, why do you think somebody else would? Because I, because I had uh, what he was saying on the audio. I had it, and I know what the he question said against is, me. The question is, ah. why would anybody lie to implicate him or herself? I don't know. Exactly. It's not rational, is it? I don't know. It doesn't make sense, does it? I don't know. Oh, you don't know that it doesn't make sense? No, I cannot understand that. Mr. Chair, it's time for the first break. <laughs>